exposing Generation Duck. Earl Spence Jr., Terrence Crawford, and the legacy of Manny Pacquiao. I have no problem. I can fight anybody on 147. I tried to 154, but you know, when I beat Margarito, and then the WBC asked me, are you going to defend your your your, your junior middleweight title? <laughs> no, give it to the neighbor. All right now, so what do I mean, exposing Generation Duck? In my day, in the generation of boxing I grew up in, being called a duck came with a lot of consequences. Keep my name out your mouth. <laughs> I'm going to keep my foot out your <laughs> All right, really. I, I was so mad with both because he wouldn't fight Lennox Lewis. Damn, Damn, I was scared of you. Number one, in those days, if you were a duck, you could be frozen out of all the good fights and all the big money fights. If you were known for ducking certain fights, then fighters would just avoid you. They wouldn't allow you to slow down their progress by trying to take a route through you. They would just go around you to the next good fight. Because of what Floyd Mayweather was able to accomplish with Maypac and his overall boxing career, being able to turn himself into somewhat of a villain and have a core fan base that would support everything that he did. But it was the villain side of Floyd Mayweather that sold his fights. People would tune in to hopefully see Floyd Mayweather lose. Let's take advantage of our youth because one day we're going to be old and we're going to, I don't want to be one day old and say, what would have happened if I would have fought Alakram Bichette? Who would have won? And then he's going to tell me, I would have won. And I would have told him, tell him, nah, man, I would have, I would have beat you. And then, you know, we would have, I would have regret that our whole lives. Somehow in the midst of that, Floyd Mayweather discovered a formula for not only making millions of dollars, but avoiding the harder fights and still cashing in. Funny in a way when you think about it. My opinion is on that, Mayweather is the one to blame. <laughs> Mayweather brought that, you gotta be undefeated to, to be great, and I don't, I don't believe that. When you look at the ripple effect that is had on the sport of boxing, you have to sometimes stop and go, wow, I can't believe this actually happened. You got Julio Cesar Chavez, you got Muhammad Ali, you got Mike Tyson, uh, Marco Antonio Barrera, everybody, all these guys, Sugar Ray Leonard, they all had losses. Everybody considers them legends, but then Mayweather comes and he was undefeated. You put that 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 style that you, that you have to take care of your, your undefeated record. So everybody's now afraid to lose undefeated record because with one loss, two losses, three losses, you're not worth the same. People don't, you're not going to get paid as well. So people are, okay, he's too much of a danger. I don't want to fight him. I want him. In this generation, they've taken what Floyd Mayweather started to a whole nother level. It's almost like ducking is the new wave. Ducking is what you're supposed to do now. I don't take these fights, these high dollar fights, these high risk fights, even though there is a high reward that comes along with it. Taking a high risk fight now is more of a afterthought. <laughs> Amazing, uh, I, I, I survived that fight. So the night of the fight, I was 140, uh, 48 pounds and Margarita 165 pounds. Rather than something you have to do to engage your audience. Mike Tyson was the king of engaging his audience. Mike Tyson could get you to tune into a fight and the fight might only last for a minute and a half. <laughs> but because he was Mike Tyson and he did what he did in stellar fashion, nobody questioned it while it was going on. You only tuned in to see the spectacle. I, that's what I'm trying to say. Too disrespectful. The only reason you put your hand on somebody, even in a street fight, is your conscience is because you have no respect for them. Like kids fight because they don't know them. But grown men fight if they're, not, if they're conscious. The only reason I put my hand on them is because I have no respect for them. Nowadays, it's more of what goes on outside of the ring is more entertaining than what a lot of these fighters actually do inside of the ring. So, ducking a fight, even for the fans now, is an afterthought. It's more like, hey, well, my fighter didn't get the amount of money we wanted. <laughs> and it's funny, I, I use the word we because as boxing fans now, we kind of take on the persona of our favorite fighters and it becomes a we thing 
and not a them thing. So when your favorite fighter doesn't get the amount of money that they or we wanted, then it's almost like, hey, well, that fight's not even important. I'm already a champion. If I fight them, I fight them. I, I can, you know, I can carry the, the punches, but the thing is, uh, after the fight, you, you can feel something, you know, um, it's too much. 147 is that, it's a, that's high for me. My natural weight is 140. It's not even like a rivalry thing anymore. What made Michael Jordan so special was he took it to his rivals. His rivals may have beaten him in the beginning. They may have won the battle in the beginning, but Michael Jordan overall won the war because he did it by winning games. He did it by facing off with all of his rivals and he did it by never ducking a challenge. Not only that, rising above the challenge and setting the bar so high that some people believe his records would never be broken. And in the sport of boxing, it's almost like fighters today, they have no will to break records. They only have will to break dollar records. And I think that's because of the precedent that Floyd Mayweather set. Now, I'm not mad at, at fighters for making the most money and taking the least amount of damage, but at some point you have to realize not only as a professional fighter but as a fan that the sport is now taking damage. Yes, fighters are making a lot more money and, and they're living a lot longer, but the sport is hurting because we no longer get the fights that made boxing what it was. And with the rise of Generation Duck, it's not just Earl Spence or Terrence Crawford that I'm pointing the finger at, it's a lot of fighters that have taken on the persona of Generation Duck. If you know anything about boxing, Pacquiao has never ducked anybody. He's not afraid of anybody. He's fought the biggest, the baddest, the best. He has fought, well, as you know, he's an eight division world champion. No one else has more than five. He's maybe the greatest ever. He has uh, knocked out, knocked out, six undefeated fighters in his career. He has defeated 21 world champions. Into the future, how is boxing gonna look when none of the greatest fighters fight each other? They only take on the number six challenger or the number 10 challenger or the challenger that's most popular on Instagram or Facebook or, or TikTok or whatever's the most popular platform of that specific year. At what point do we as boxing fans start to hold people accountable for not making good fights. It's almost like we as the fans accept it and expect it and challenge anybody who goes against the narrative of this is a duck or that is a duck or your favorite fighter or the toughest fighter of the day isn't actually living up to their title. They're not even actually challenging themselves when you go back and look at some of the records. The legacy of Manny Pacquiao, I think, is the pinnacle of that. And a lot of people, I take a lot of flack from people because they feel like I'm fanboying Pacquiao. But when you look at Manny Pacquiao's resume and what he accomplished within the sport, you could put some of the fighters, the greatest fighters of today, you could put their records together and it still hasn't even eclipsed half of what Manny Pacquiao has been able to accomplish. Yeah, Pacquiao could have picked an easy fight, easier fight, but he picked up again the best watcher out there, one of the best watchers. And, and and he's got a chance of beating him. So that's what I mean. I think that that's why he's history, man. Look at look at his last three fights. Look at Mayweather's last three fucking fights. So when you talk about legendary fighters, and you can throw Matt up, and you can throw Floyd Mayweather in there as well, that 50 and 0, it, it's it's to be marveled at, but it started a controversy within the sport. Manny Pacquiao's record, because he has losses and because he has so many victories, it shows that there is still a segment of fighter out there that wants to be cemented in history as a legend and that there is still stuff to shoot for within this sport. It hasn't, it hasn't all been accomplished yet. And it just would take for these younger fighters to start risking that O and really challenging themselves for this generation to be known as the greatest generation of boxers 
like the last generation of boxers was and the previous generation of boxers was. I hope they don't get labeled forever the generation of duck or the duck generation in boxing. But for now, I think Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence Jr., especially with what has happened recently with Crawford taking on David Anise, a number six challenger and not Earl Spence, a number one and a champion challenger. It just shows the state of boxing. And it sucks, man, as a fan. And I definitely think this is the generation of duck. Y'all let me know what y'all think about that down in the comment section below. Hit that like button for me. Share, share, share. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Holler at me on all social media platforms. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. But you're more than likely to get a response on the tube. So holler at me over there if you want a response. And we are it's your boy Key's neighborhood employee. Niggas knew that I was coming with fire. Y'all went up to my pa and up under a car. Your head under a tie, it's the S and the R. Player, we supposed to win. I'm in the booth focusing with coke and hen. Uh, Do hate it when you see the chief running in. Ass mouth hurting like his wisdom teeth coming in. Now that's a roundhouse kick. Come round your house, letting rounds out quick. From Newburgh to downtown, it's that Midwest to down south shit. Y'all ain't fucking with she chillin', sayin' tryna put the veal on the mouth What's good? She ain't nothin', sayin' tryna show his niggas how to rock